Okay. All right, very good, everybody. Thank you. The hour being after six o'clock, I'd like to call the January 26th meeting of the school building committee to order. Uh, first on the item, I don't have the exact legal language, but we're all aware that Governor Baker has suspended certain provisions of the open meeting law, thus we're meeting by Zoom. Uh, so I'll leave that at that. Our next order of business is to approve the January 5th meeting minutes. If you could take a moment to reconsider those. All right, did you want to do a roll call to see if who's um, who might be joining us as a member of the public? Uh, yeah, I could, I, I, could, I could certainly do that. Uh, Tony, would a, a roll call of everybody present or just speaking to the members of the public that might be here? Uh, I think there are a few members that are not on the committee. So okay, if, very good. If uh, you're interested in identifying those, we could do that or we okay. could just move on. Okay, very good. So uh, tomorrow is with Walpole Television. Emily Hunt, you're a member of the public, am I correct? Yes, I'm with Warner Larson Landscape Architects. Oh, okay, very good. And uh, T.I. Johnson, a member of the public, I gather? No, I think she's a consultant also. Okay, very good. So those are the only unfamiliar names that I see. We have um, a 508 um, phone in. I don't know if that's... I think that might be... Donnie? Donnie. 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 Yeah. Donnie. Donnie. 7300, that's me. Very good. Okay. Yep, very good. I'm pretty sure that's everybody then. Yep, that's everybody. Very okay. good. Okay, that's covered. So, do I have a meeting, uh, pardon me, a motion to approve the January 5th meeting minutes? So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Gayositz. Do second. I have a second? A second by Ms. Gallivan. Very good. Let me poll the committee. Dr. Goff? Yes. Ms. Gallivan? Yes. Mr. Frischa? Yes. Ms. Santiago Taylor. Yes. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. Yes. Mr. Salvatore. Yes. Ms. Gayositz. Yes. Mr. Senek. Yes. And Ms. Lawson. Yes. Oh, and Mr. Fisher. Mr. Jack Fisher is connecting now. Uh, Mr. Fisher, do you want to vote on the meeting minutes? We just took a, a vote. So he's not quite connected. So we'll, I, get, I think we'll call it a vote if we could move on. Uh, yes. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fisher. So uh, I, should have met, I should have mentioned previously, if anybody has any objections, we're going to take some of the items out of order. Number four, the feasibility study item. Uh, we're going to save until near the end of the meeting, unless anybody has any objections. Hearing none, let's let's move on then, please. If we could move on to approval of the invoices, and uh, I don't know if Tony, you want to speak to those or? Um, yeah, I can bring these up. Um, so these are the two amounts for the month of December. Um, it's the Compass invoice and a fairly typical Tap A invoice. Uh, for a total of 58,401. Um, so these are just the December only invoices. Um, I can also scroll down and show a budget status report if anyone's interested in that. Um, this so is nice. Committed funds have not changed. Um, spent to date uh, is 357,937. Um, we still have available um, in the total overall feasibility budget, 279,000. So. Very good, are there any questions about the invoices in your packet? So I believe we have to approve the invoices. Yes, we these have... here. Very good. So it will be Compass CPM 82-11 and tap A201208 for the total of 58,401.25. Very good, would anybody like to phrase that as a motion, please? Uh, I'll recommend, I'll move that we, that uh, we recommend that we pay the, those two invoices in the amount indicated. 
Very good, Mr. Fisher. Do we have a second? Second. A second by a motion by Mr. Jack Fisher, a, mo a second by Mrs. Galliman. Uh, let me poll the committee, Dr. Goff. Yes. I vote yes. Uh, Ms. Gallivan? Yes. Mr. Frischa? Yes. Ms. Santiago Taylor? Yes. Ms. Uh, thank you. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Jack Fisher? Yes. Mr. Hahn? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher? Yes. Mr. Salvatore? Yes. Ms. Gayositz? Yes. Mr. Senek? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. And Mr. Conroy? Yep. Thank you. Uh, it is a motion. Uh, the next item, if we could, would be the TAPE amendment. And once again, Mr. Pena, would you like to explain this? Yes. Yeah, so this, uh, in the original TAPE contract, we included uh, geotechnical, which is the boring on-site, the test boring, as well as environmental assessment which is the phase one analysis for the site. Um, as we moved through um, the process, we decided to also do the same scope at Johnson, um, which was not included in the original. Uh, it was itemized, but we decided not to take that um, scope of work. And then later we added it as we decided um, in the fall that we were gonna maybe consider Johnson. So. The amount that's shown here for 26,500, this includes all the test borings that were done um, up at the top of the hill at Johnson with full soil analysis, as well as um, the phase one environmental assessment that we did, which includes touring the site, um, historic research, and it results in that report um, in, that will be included in the PSR. So this amount, um, which I can take you to a breakdown here. Um, so you can see the history. This red box um, was included in the original TAP A amount. We excluded Johnson, and then we later added this amount, 17750 for the geotechnical. And um, only 8750 of the 9950 uh, 9, because we did not do water any water analysis at Johnson. Had we continued to move toward a Johnson solution, we probably would have done that at some point um, during schematic, but we did not do it, so we held off on that. So the total of the 17,750 plus the 8,750 8, adds up to total amendment for the Johnson um, site analysis of 26,500. So that gets added to this number, which was the original contract, which included bird plus everything to do with schematic to the end of schematic design. So this is the new total. Most of the work is complete. We're still awaiting the phase one report from Johnson. Um, so this is more of a formality to approve this so that TAP A, um, their consultant Weston and Samson can bill for the work that they've done. Thank you, Mr. Pena. So you need a vote from the committee then? A vote for the committee for um, ta designer amendment number one in the amount of 26500 Very good. Would anybody like to phrase that motion, please? Would anybody like to phrase the motion? I could. Uh, Make a motion, Mark. Okay, Mr. Fisher. You want me to? Yeah, I, yeah. I guess. You, yeah, if you could phrase it, uh, Tony. How would you like it phrased? In other words, um, basically recommend approval of designer amendment number one in the amount of twenty six thousand five hundred. All right, I'll make the motion to for to approve amendment number one to tap to, <clears throat> to tap a architects in the amount of twenty six thousand five hundred dollars. Very good. We have a, a motion by Mr. Jack Fisher. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Ms. Lawson. Yep. Let, let me poll the committee. Dr. Goff? Yes. I vote yes. Uh, Ms. Gallivan? Yes. Ms. Santiago Taylor? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Jack Fisher? Yes. Uh, okay, everybody's bouncing them on, around my screen here. Pardon me. Mr. Frischa? Yes. Mr. Hahn? 
Yes. Mr. Connor. Mr. Connor. Yeah. Yes. Again. Very good. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. Yes. Mr. Salvatore. Yes. Ms. Gayositz. Yes. Mr. Senek. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. And Mr. Fisher. I'll take that as a yes. It is a vote. Uh, so our next item here is uh, the big one of the evening, the feasibility study discussion again. And as a reminder, everybody, so we need to reconsider the community feedback that we've had in the various options and ultimately vote on one option this evening. So once again, Ms. Pena or Mr. Jarvis, whomever would like to speak. I'll just bring us all up to date really quickly. We've seen this um, timeline, this green bar is getting closer and closer to our um, submission of the PSR, um, which we're still on target to do on February 26th. Um, after tonight's vote, um, obviously there'll be a lot of work to get us to that date, including cost, some cost analysis and um, estimates. So um, for tonight, like um, Chairman Breen pointed out, um, we've done obviously a little bit more detailed study. We've been evaluating and you'll see um, the snapshot of the evaluation matrix tonight. So tonight would be voting on the preferred option that will make it into the report. Um, a recap of the community forum. Uh, most of the members of the committee were at the various meetings held last week, which included um, a joint meeting of the select board and the water and sewer commission. So people were able to hear um, concerns and comments surrounding um, the Johnson site, as well as some other environmental factors um, including tree clearing and the condition of the fields. Um, namely, the fields are going to remain in pretty much the current state due to um, the inability to fertilize or do anything further. So those that's just a recap. If anybody has any questions um, regarding those meetings, um, we can take those on. One issue that came up related to both sites is um, traffic analysis. As everyone's aware in this committee, um, it's hard to do any traffic analysis and counts at this point um, due to COVID, but as we get moved through schematic, we'll be taking a, um, a little bit of a look. And tonight, TAPE, as well as their consultants, um, will show us some circulation um, on both sites. And so um, I'm going to table that for now. Um, and at this point, I might hand it over to Chris and his team just to go over the three options. We have three options left. Basically, we have the Bird Reno, the Bird New, and the Johnson New. So those are the three shortlisted options that we're going to try and um, review one last time tonight and then come up with a preferred solution. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Chris um, and members of his team. There, are, there is, um, you can see here, there is a little bit more design work done um, regarding site, so um, I'll allow Chris to um, cover that now. Uh, thanks, Tony. So, uh, so yeah, we've been kind of tinkering with these options a little bit um, to flesh flesh out any kind of um, uh, lingering questions that we had about their feasibility and, and what we can do or can't do on the sites and. Um, this first one is the add Reno to the Johnson or to the bird school. And we haven't actually done a ton on this one, um, between the last time you saw it and this time. Um, but just to reiterate, the idea here is that any of the things you see in the sort of more saturated yellow color, um, are the addition points. Uh, and so the major, um, idea around this one is we could build a new classroom wing on the north side of the building and then that could almost act as a little bit of a swing space and then you could tackle different parts of the project um, a little bit at a time and so um, so that's and then the other portions of infill around the um, around the building and, and that just helps create some of the larger program spaces like the auditorium and uh, media centers and cafes, cafeterias and stuff like that. So um, 
So yeah, this one kind of remains the same. You can see the circulation lines that we are thinking about here, which is uh, pretty consistent between the two options on the bird site, which is that we are thinking that the buses may come from the street um, and then car circulation comes from Washington Street. And if you were um, on the call the other evening with the select board, you heard me talk a little bit about the concepts around queuing and not mixing traffic lanes and stuff like that with the buses and the cars because if the buses come in and they open their doors and it has to stop everything on the site until they're done. So this is one of the strategies to help um, ease traffic on onto the site from Washington Street and the queuing distances and things like that. So um, just some of the strategies that you'll see in the other uh, option as well. So then you can go to the next one. Uh, so the B1 option, we've been working on the footprint. Um, this is largely the same. In fact, you can see the diagrams to the right that show the three floors um, are the same ones that you've been seeing, but the footprint on the left that's put on the site itself is actually new to you uh, as of you know tonight. And what we've been doing is trying to work out the floor elevations relative to the grading on the site. And the grading has been a challenge for to, to figure out and how we go about the strategies for getting the building where we need it, not creating a scenario where we have too much fill or too much cut, and also putting in a lot of those components that we heard about during the visioning sessions, which are outdoor learnings and outdoor learning areas and school gardens. And then again, trying to resolve some of the, the traffic flow issues and queuing distances on the site. And so what you're seeing here is a take on how to get the roads around the building, um, which is one of the really big components to design is trying to create a building that you can get um, emergency vehicles and, and really service vehicles too around the building. And the one kind of thing that we've um, done here that you can see on the north side of the building is created a little bit of a loop and that's because of the grades that are happening on the site and we needed a little bit of a turn that the the fire trucks could get through to get to the back side of the building and the um, police cars and emergency vehicles, stuff like that, maintenance vehicles. Um, and then making it come down the site in a way that would be uh, traversable for any kind of vehicles on the roadway. So, um, and then the buses have their own lane and own car, uh, own driveway um, that goes out to East Street that doesn't mix at all with the cars. And so that's, that's pretty nice. And you'll see on the bus loop as well that that's where the service would come in. Um, and the services for bus buses would also be where the building deliveries and you know this this building is being programmed with a centralized kitchen so that service area would accommodate any of the trucks or vehicles that have to deliver lunches to other schools in town and um and so yeah this is a real um a real progress from the last time you've seen it and having to work through a lot of other factors around um where the bird is now and how to work around that one thing you'll see is that the building is very close to the new proposed building is very close to the that red dashed line of the existing building, but it is a maintainable distance for construction and um, that's one of the things we've been sort of keeping an eye on is um, how to do this building working with the bird and keeping egress from the bird active. Um, and so it's just an ongoing sort of logistics puzzle that we're piecing together here and uh, Warner Larson, Emily and Ty who are on the call have done a really great job progressing this and the thinking around the grading given sort of all the challenges that were um, very nuanced. So, um, so that's the B1 option and the J2 option, uh, we have not updated the building. The building is still the same that you that you noticed last time. The one thing that we have done is gone back to make sure the graphics were very clear in their presentation on uh, the effects or the potential effects to the water resources in town. And this is based from those meetings from the Water and Sewer Commission and then again with the select board 
uh, we've now highlighted very clear the wellheads and then the zone two area, which is the dashed red line, and that creates the little like uh, pale orange color overlay. And here it's a lot clearer to see how the building relates to all of that and how the parking is situated inside of the that zone two. And then if you know a lot of the conversation has been around uh, fertilization of the fields within the zone one and so and that they would be really unusable um, because they just get trampled and, and, and you know can't really take care of them with without fertilization so um, the potential for field we added that graphic on as well so that you kind of see how much more of the site is taken up which in turn means how much more of the trees are cut down in order to create playing area for uh, for the field. And so um, we're just trying to highlight the realities around those wells and the water resources in town and not for protection. So um, I think those are really the three kind of sites under consideration right now and the three ideas that you're thinking about. And um, hopefully those help progress the conversation around uh, site selection that you'll, you'll be doing tonight. All right, thanks, Chris. Um, so this is the current evaluation matrix. It's last updated um, on the 14th. Um, and we could continue to um, amend this. But um, there have been some changes, obviously, at the Johnson um, with some of the feedback, some of the early feedback ahead of those meetings um, with concerns around um, Natural habitat and environment has now turned to kind of a poor rating at Johnson, um, along with possible future expansion and growth. Um, a relatively new factor is town support for the option, which is this one. Um, and we're showing that as fair as opposed to good um, at the bird. So Brian, I don't know uh, what else you want to add um, related to changing these or if people are comfortable with um, the ratings that these currently have um, based on the factors and some of the notes that we've been developing over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I think all we were trying to do with this was based on some of the feedback and discussions that had happened prior to sending this out on the 14th, we're just trying to capture some of those updates. I think the, the intent is that it's supposed to be a conversation starter with the committee. I think the committee should talk through these options based on um, some of the feedback and conversations they've had. Um, at some point, we should be able to move through these options and, and basically agree with how the committee would want to rank these um, criteria um, if we're down to that level of detail. And then eventually tonight, this would end up being a, a record document um, that the committee would then vote on with what choice they wanted to move forward. I, I mean, by no means are these color codes supposed to be, you know, cast in stone. They're kind of our first swag at some of these things or updated swags at some of these things. Um, but really it's intended to have the committee discuss, um, you know, possibly agree or disagree, but at some point uh, get the get the options in a place where everyone thinks that it's, it's reflective of what they represent and then uh, vote on which one they would like to move forward. So Mark, I think at this point is just discussion amongst the committee of, of the options and you know, if some of these need to change up or down or green or more towards the red and then uh, we can talk through some of the questions if anyone has questions. Ms. Alice has her hand up, so if she wants to begin the discussion. Alice? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I listened to the Board of Selectmen and the Sewer and Water Commissioners speaking about the Johnson site. And although I recognize that um, we could try to dance around the, the issues um, of the wells, <clears throat> um, I, I just think that trying to site the middle school on the Johnson location is going to just uh, create all kinds of problems for us going forward. Um, and I understand we have to have the, um, uh, the BR2 one in there as a, we're required to. 
Um, I, I'd be in favor of pushing B1 to the top um, and uh, proposing that as our solution because I think the, the Johnson site is just going to end up, I think, um, uh, the project will fail because there'll be enough people who will be spooked about the water supply, whether, whether for, for real or imagined reasons, whether it's an exaggerated concern or a legitimate concern, um, at the end of the day, I think the Johnson site is going to be a non-starter. Um, so I personally have moved um, solidly in favor of, um, of uh, B1. And I'll just throw that out there for discussion. Ms. Lawson, does anybody have any questions or comments? And I'm back, by the way. I lost Wi-Fi there for a few minutes. But would anybody I'm else like? I'm sorry, who? I think Ms. Giosits has her hand up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Jen? I, want, I wanted to say that I agree with um, Ms. Lawson's assessment based upon the community feedback and you know, just the fact that I've sat through plenty of town meetings discussing environmental impacts of proposed projects around town. And it worries me that, you know, we're going to choose a solution that's not going to get community support, just given the fact that we're going to be cutting down some trails, um, you know, impacting trails and impacting the environment when we have another site that seems to be a real viable solution. In addition to that, I'm concerned about um, the fact that there's not really a good remedy for traffic at the Johnson site. Um, people have said this, and I do agree, that turn onto the main road is a nightmare. Um, and I'm just, you know, that's, that's a lot of work where there's only one road accessing it, and you have another site that has two main roads, one in the front and one in the back. It just seems like you know, given both of these factors and the other ones that Ms. Lawson discussed that I support moving up um, the bird site to the top. Good, Ms. Giosis. Would anybody else like to speak? I think David has his, had his hand up and then okay. Jack and then Nate. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Salvatore. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so I just wanted to um, ask about the bird site, am I reading this correctly that you've now moving the whole project away from the fields up, up, you know, closer to Washington Street on the Washington Street side of the current building? Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. That's, that's, yeah, it's the B1 option. Okay. So, um, all right. And so the impact to fields that was a concern earlier about this site is no longer a concern. Is that correct? Are you going to get Yeah, it's not. Can I just clarify that, um, yeah. Mark? Um, so it's be clear that the if you look, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the cursor, the road that goes out to the left towards each street for the buses. Right. That's what was my question. That, yep. that will, um, it's going to hug the property line and it will affect the outfield of one of the fields and um, the soccer field will just, you know, it's a flat area for the soccer field that would still fit between all the fields. And, um, but the baseball field that's over off to the left there on the northern side of the site um, towards East Street would would still be within the bounds of the correct dimensions for a baseball field. And so um, we would just have to carefully get that roadway in. And so it's, it's not that it's absolute zero impacting. We won't be working in that area, but it, you will be able to keep your fields without having to rebuild them. So I just want to be clear. That. My recollection is that outfield is un, un uh, fenced and then it goes up a hill. Um, Correct. And to do some grading over there to get the field uh, to get the roadway in and deal with um a potential fence out there or some some kind of um safety factor for the outfield so that'll sure, but there's enough room from home plate to put a reasonable fence at that location is that correct yep okay 
All right. Um, yeah, I just also, to, I'm sorry, but anything know, else, I, Mr. Salvatore? Well, just to clarify on the, the traffic at Rollin, Robbins Road, I, that was my, one of my concerns earlier on. Um, I did clarify that I believe the North Street uh, intersection there is going to get a traffic light with the new renovations of uh, 1A. Um, but the other end, the concern at Robbins Road at Elm Street would still be a, a factor um, traffic wise. Um, uh, you know, and I, I j just as to the water impact, I, and I wanted to clarify that, um, well, the water impact, and Mr. Conroy spoke well uh, about this earlier uh, at an earlier meeting, but the fact is that this town has built a um, uh, repair garage for diesel, for our trucks and our vehicles at much closer to the wellhead than, than this, high, this middle school would be. And having said that, I, I, I mean, I still think that the, I had previously voted for the bird site and I think the bird site is a better site but I just wanted people who had previously, I think all but one or two of us had voted for the Johnson site. Um, I think, you know, some of those factors, uh, uh, you know, for, for whatever reason you chose that site, I don't know that the water alone uh, should impact you. But I do agree with previous speakers that, you know, well, and I, I think this from, hearing the discussion in the public and, and the select board, I think a lot of their concern among the members of the select board was that, and this, this conversation didn't include me as I missed that meeting, was that it was not going to be as easy of a sell to the general public. And I think you've reflected that indicate uh, on the grid at this point. Um, and that may be the case. I, I, I don't really have to, have to gauge of that. Um, but, um, you know, I think, um, and I, I think those, you know, just wanted to clarify those factors. One other question about the bird site is during construction, would you, um, would you be use, would you bring in that new road early on so that you would have another way to bring, uh, vehicles, you know, can, can the bus lane get built early on so that you can actually use it for the, while it's under construction, so you don't have to bring people in the other direction or. Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt um, the, um, let me just annotate here real quick. So yeah, we would anticipate. We can't see your screen, Chris. Can you see oh, that? There you go. Yep. yep. Yeah, so we would anticipate this edge of the site probably being done as um, enabling, and they can do that roadway up to a point. You couldn't do the whole thing probably because you know the bird is in that dashed red line currently. Sure. Um, but that would allow the contractor some access and lay down. They they may be able to even get this one built as an enabling, and then all of this could become available for contractor access and lay down as well. Um, and then they can do fine grading and seeding and stuff later. Um, that, there's two different ways here to really get at the building and keep construction completely separate from cars. And then obviously just working through some logistics, we're gonna have to put a fence on this side, um, do a realignment of the road and, and try to get as much parking and drop off, you know, temporary up this area for the phase during of which the school is active and the buildings being built. So, so what is the difference in height between where the bird is now in the fields? Uh, the first floor of the bird is about 220 is an elevation of about 220. Um, let's call it, let's call it like 231 somewhere in there. Um, and the fields are at about two, I was doing this today, it's about 215, 214, somewhere in there, 215, call it. So about 15 feet from the first, from the middle floor of the bird down to the field. So that's that's from this side to this gotcha. side is a delta of about 15 feet. 
Okay, thanks. Thank you for your time. I, I know Thank I you, Mr. Salvatore. Mr. Jack Fisher, I believe you were next. Thanks, Mark. Um, I want to start with a question and then a couple comments, okay? First is I wasn't able to attend the, uh, the, uh, the community forum late, earlier this week. Um, what was it last week? What was the uh, what was the tone of that? What were some of the issues that were raised at that meeting? I'll take a first shot at that. So I think the tone was was pretty um, pretty inquisitive. I think a lot of people had a lot of questions um, about both projects, um, and then the focus on the Johnson was more along the lines of what the potential options were on that site not only you know where the buildings could be built what happens to the old building is the vfw in play there were a lot of questions related to traffic um, there was like a lot of questions if there was going to be additional access built from some of those neighboring streets um, and i think there was a lot of conversation regarding some of the information that had been presented by the water and sewer so there's people had some concerns about that. They had some concerns about the circuit trail, the base circuit trail that's in there. Um, and they had some questions about the viability of the existing fields and what could be done in the future with those fields and new fields. Um, on the bird site also kind of related to traffic. Um, and I've had a couple big picture, big schedule um, and budget type questions related to town meeting in general. But the, the main focus I think on both sites uh, Johnson, obviously, more with questions around the water and the trees, but also the traffic. Um, and a couple questions, I think, associated with, with phasing, but I think overall it was a pretty informative meeting. Okay, so it was more, it was more kind of a, a question and answer as opposed to uh, people taking sides very quickly. Yeah, I'm I'll speak to that. Yeah, Mark, you good. I, I think soar and water was... was Sewer and water were certainly taking your side, yeah. um, but in, in a very civil sort of way. Um, and, and most of the rest was sort of a question and answer, but questions that I think had some concern about the Johnson site more than the bird site. I don't know if anybody disagrees with that or not, but that's my take. Okay, I've got a few comments, Mark, if you don't mind. Certainly. I'm. I'm troubled quite a bit when I look at the changes in the in the ratings for the evaluation criteria between tonight and our last meeting. Um, basically, Johnson took a hit, a significant hit, between the two meetings in six of the different categories. And um, I, I spoke pretty strongly at the sewer and water uh, selectmen's meeting about at least a couple of them. So I'd just like to go over and offer a couple of thoughts here. Um, and the first one supports the educational goals that went from green to yellow, simply because there's less field space available. But, but I would maintain that if you're going to go ahead, sure, the quality of the field that's up there right now is not very good. It's not as good a quality as the fields that are down at, at bird, but you've got a big area and you're putting another, and you're putting another field in. So to go ahead and, and, and bring that down two notches, I think is kind of an overstatement. Okay, another one was the special site related costs, costs to address zoning and permitting. It's no different there than it is at, at, the, at the bird site. Okay, um, yes, we're gonna have to go through a permitting process. We don't have to go through a zoning process. We're not asking to change the zones. So to go ahead and take that down two notches, I think is inappropriate. Um, I can't do anything about the new one that you put in for the boards, committees, and, and uh, public about what the support is, but I was distressed by one of the selectmen saying at, this, at the combined meeting that uh, he said, I don't know why you're looking at Johnson because the other side is so much better. And I don't think this committee looked at it this way two weeks ago. And I think if we properly uh, do the, the evaluations and the ratings, I don't think that's gonna be the case at all. Impact of traffic, um, that went down two notches as well. Um, and I, what I would suggest to you is all you have to do is stand out at Bird Middle School 
when school is get, going in in the, in the morning or coming out in the afternoon at the corner of High Plains Street and Washington Street where the lights are, it's terrible. And now what you're going to do is you're going to dump it in two directions. And one of the things that people, and I, I understand completely what Chris was saying, you, it's too early to do a traffic study, and particularly with in light of COVID right now. But now what you're going to have is you're going to have twice the amount of traffic, okay, and it's going to be going on the up towards the other side of town, where a lot of the traffic right now is is over on the east side of town towards the school. Now what's going to be going is going to be going all over town for the school buses and the and the auto traffic. So I don't think that there's a significant uh, improvement by going with Bro Bro Bird School as opposed to uh, Johnson Middle. The one that I find really, really distressing is the red one that you put in for the natural habitat. And I'm going to say very clearly what I said at, at the Sewer and Water Commission meeting. Okay, we are actually improving the site there. The new building will be farther set back from the wellheads and the discharge areas than the current building is. We are actually improving the site. If we go to if we were to build the building over at Bird Middle School to improve the situation with the wells over at the old Johnson site the town is gonna to have to allocate additional money to take the fields out and to, and to take the tennis courts out and to uh, demolish the building. And that's not gonna be cheap. That's gonna be expensive. So um, that is a, that is a uh, let's just say, I'll be polite in saying, I think that this is a disingenuous comment and, cons and concern. We're improving the site when the building is done and the old building is 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 demolished, and the, all the site work is done. You're going to have an improved situation there over what we have, what we have right now. And I think it's really quite unfair for sewer and water to single this particular project out. Where in the past they've been kind of okay, we'll let this happen, we'll let this happen. And as Jack Conroy pointed out very clearly, if they want to do this, they should through, do it through a zoning change and say there will be no building in. The um, not just in the uh, 400 foot uh, wellhead protection area, but in the 800 foot, I think it's uh, uh, area A zone two. Okay, it it's the so and finally the last one future expansion and in growth. Um, you're going to be whether it's at Bird or whether it's Johnson. There's going to be it's going to be tough to go ahead and improve and. Uh, and, and uh, put another building, uh, an expansion in that building going down in the future. Bill, Bird is on a hillside, okay? At least Johnson will be on the flat, and there is that poss always that possibility of doing something with the VFW. So I think what is it, what I would like to suggest to this committee is that we have an open discussion right now, okay, tonight, about the ratings that, have, that are, are appearing in front of us, because I think they're, they, 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 they merit some 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 discussion and some adjustment to go ahead and to say, well, OK, we've made changes and we've downgraded Johnson in six different categories, at least two or three ratings. I just don't think is fair and I don't think it's it, it does justice to our process. So um, I'll 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 stop now for, on that for now. Uh, Mark, you're on mute. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. I think we can circle back to your recommendation, but before then, if we could have the other the other speakers speak, Mr. Jeffrey Fisher, I do believe you are next. Good, thanks, Mark. Um, you know, I think I've brought it up in the past, folks. Um, there, there's a key evaluation criteria that that doesn't exist on here. I'd like to see it added, and for me, it it's probably one of the most significant evaluation criteria. Mark, I don't know if you recall, but back um, back early on in this committee's, you know, first meetings, you talked about your experience over in Rentham. Um, and, and it really relates back to that. It resonated with me. And the evaluation criteria I'm talking about is impact to students. And for me, that is why, you know, I, I've, all along looked at the Johnson site as one of my preferred choices, simply because it's it's away from the existing building. We're not looking at having, I mean, I just looked at what we offered there in B1 
and, and to have 450, 500 students actively, you know, trying, trying to be educated in an active construction site for three years is concerning to me. Um, that, that's really it. That's, that's what I have to offer. It's, it's one of, you know, the, the biggest criteria that, that I would use to, to base a decision on uh, where I think this should be located. So um, obviously Johnson has the least amount of impact to the existing student body, the incoming, or whoever this is going to affect. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Fisher. As I saw it, that was line, the existing school criteria. Line 12 impact to existing school is how I read that one, but it's certainly not as clear as it could be. Um, yeah, Jeff, the intention of that impact to existing school was obviously not the physical, but the, the school itself during the construction process, obviously renovation would have the most. Um, the bird one option would have, you know, definitely impact as far as temporary logistics and circulation and obviously noise and things of that nature. And then the, the bird was green for being a segre segregated site. That's how we, we were considering the students in that option, not necessarily the physical building. Okay, thank you for clarifying, Brian. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Uh, Mr. Senek, I believe you were next. And then Ms. Uh, Gallivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, couple of comments uh, from my end. Um, I do agree with um, uh, a lot of the speakers that have spoken so far, uh, specifically Ms., uh, Mr. Fisher. Um, I've, I've raised that same question in that public forum. Uh, when it came down to improving the site of the existing Johnson site. Um, and I also do agree with Mrs. Lawson when it comes down to the public sector. Um, to me, this project specifically is going to live and die with uh, the voters. Um, they are ultimately going to decide whether this project move, moves forward or it gets... It gets shot down. So in order for us to put ourselves in the best position possible um, to have a successful project and to execute this properly, um, I, I think that merits um, us looking at that bird site uh, in, in a higher um, stance than we do at the Johnson site. Um, I do like a lot of the things that the Johnson site creates. Um, I do like the, the fact, like I said, the, what Mr. Mr. Fisher said about uh, improving the, the current um, status of the, of the school. Um, I like the fact that it's away from the existing building and uh, uh, those fields, you're not going to be able to impact them anyways, no matter what you do. So though those can stay as is, and then the birds fields wouldn't be touched. Um, the new design of the bird definitely puts uh uh, more um, emphasis on the fields that, and than we initially had when we had the building on the fields. Um, so that, to me, that's a benefit. Um, and um, Mr. Jeff Fisher's comments about um, student impact, I, I, I do agree that there is a certain level of impact that the students may be impacted, but they're going to be inside the building. Um, and they have a whole field area that is not going to be touched is still uh, um, utilized for physical activity. So I, I think that would be minimal to me and instead of a yellow, I think it would be more of a light green. Um, so to me, my, my decision really hasn't changed from, from my initial thoughts. I, I, like I said, I do like the fact that um, the Johnson site does create a lot of the different uh, viabilities that you don't have at the uh, bird site, but I think separating the traffic into two separate directions um, will definitely alleviate some of the traffic issues that we currently see on High Street in Washington. Thank you, Mr. Senek. Ms. Gallivan and then Ms. Santiago Taylor, if we could. Thank you, Mark. Um, I, have, I was concerned at the last meeting when I saw the Johnson site and I have tremendous respect for the points you're trying to bring up, Jack Fisher. You always do your homework, and I appreciate that. Um, I, I was concerned 
that we hadn't done enough homework on the Johnson site. So I'm thankful for the fact that um, a great deal of effort has happened since, since we met last. I'm very concerned about the proximity to the wells. I'm not a, a water and sewer expert, but I know, as I think it was Jen Gayotz that's mentioned, that when somebody like Bill Abbott speaks about the, the water concerns, and he's spoken extremely strongly about concerns at Johnson, um, that in general, town meeting tends to listen to him. Um, he usually has done his homework, and as a matter of fact, I keep checking to see if he's on this call because he reached out to me today to get the link to be here, but I don't see I don't see him. There. I I know that um, I, I'm affected by how concerned he is about the proximity to the wells. Um, in he had something that he wrote today to the middle school project email address that um, I read and it made me convinced that I'm even more concerned about the Johnson site. But um, I don't want to speak for him. I guess I looked at the costs, which did have differences a few weeks ago, and now they look very similar to me. Because if you look at the addition and renovation, a significant number of dollars are not reimbursable. So I, I think that even though that turns out to be um, a little bit lower than the the full new building at Bird, um, the cost to the taxpayer is going to be negligible. Um, or that's just my prediction. And I also think that um, the cost of having to mitigate the concerns about water and recharging water on the Johnson site will make that cost go up. I believe it's noted there on the grid. So to me, the cost have um, sort of become less different among the three choices. I think that this is a huge investment and uh, um, we want it to be something that is viewed as a positive for the town. And I would just hate to see it feel like a compromise between the school system and our water supply. And I would be I, I'd be afraid that that's the road that we're going down if we choose the Johnson site. Um, so I'm, I'm heavily learning, leaning towards doing a new building on the bird site. I, I don't think, I don't know whether other people want to talk about the renovation, but I'd be concerned about renovating because you're spending almost the same dollars and, um, we know that the ceilings are low in John's, in Bird. I, I think we would just end up with a much better product if we didn't try to renovate. So those are my thoughts. Thank you, Ms. Gallivan. Ms. Santiago Taylor, I believe you are next. Hi, um, so I wanted to start saying two things. Like I'm not even considering the Reno one. Um, I think doing Reno is, you're going to find so many holes. So I'm like, I'm not even thinking about it right now. I think we need to start new. Um, so thinking about option B1 in, in Johnson 2, I also want to say, I, I get that my kids go to Johnson, but by the time this is done, neither of my kids are going to be in Johnson. Like they're going to be past Johnson. So I'm not even thinking about my family when I do this. What I feel that sometimes has, has, the conversation that has been missing is what's going to be best for the kids. Um, I get that voting voters are important. We need them to be able to get this through. I get that water is important. That is important. Like we need it to as a community. But for the kids' sake, I think Johnson is a better side. I feel Bird is a kid being run over by traffic or a bus waiting to happen. If it hasn't happened yet, I don't know how. That is just an awful sight for a school. Um, I, you know, I, when I see this, I'm leaning more towards B1 because of there's more green, I guess. Um, 
said, I hear you all talking and very few have mentioned what's going to be best for the kids. Um, and I, and I think we need to figure that out before we make a decision. Um, this is not about voters. This is not necessarily about water. This is not about the sewer. Um, this is how, what, what environment are our children going to be better served? What school, what development is going to give our kids, our children, our community, our future, the best results? Thank you, Ms. Santiago Taylor. Does anybody else have any comments? Would anybody like to circle back? As yes, for, I, oh, I have comments. Okay, Mr. Conroy, if you could, please. Okay. Uh, first off, question for the designers. What is the state requirement for fields for a middle school? Um. Are you talking about how many fields a school would have? Or this what, what, no, what are the requirements that you have to provide to get state funding in amount of square foot for outside activities for a middle school? Um, Ty Johnson, do you know of any, um, I don't know if someone can unmute Ty Johnson, but. Um, I'm you? here, uh, I, Chris, I, I don't know the answer to that. You're not talking about MSBA funding, you're talking about state funding. Correct. Programs. Yes, yeah. I don't believe there's anything. Okay, so that's what I wanted to bring it to. Everybody's talking about these fields. Let's get back to reality. And I'm going to say, I'm in, I'm in the business of building, been on this committee forever, and I've built a lot of schools, middle schools in Brookline and Boston. There's not this field stuff. So just so everybody understands, there is not a field requirement for a middle school. The reason we have those fields up at East, as I'll call it, or Bird, is those are varsity and junior varsity soccer and baseball and softball fields. So, so everybody should understand, we're not required at a middle school to have these enormous fields. So we can kind of take that one off the table. Now, the one thing as a parent, what gets me is we talk about what a, I'll say a crap show that the uh, Johnson field is. My kids went there. Why haven't we, why is it all of a sudden we gotta make it better? My kids and everyone else who's gone through Johnson never had the luxury of a decent field, but all of a sudden now that's the important. That's something no one's talked about. And if I hear one more time, fertilize, I know that that's in the zone one or area one, I should say, but well, we could have watered it. So kind of let's, Kind of take that off the table too. All right, regarding bird, and I, and I'm going by based. I am a final dollar guy. What makes the most sense? First off, I don't think you're going to be able to put a road up through left field for that uh, JV baseball field because right now the fence is at the top of the hill and it's going to be very difficult. And also, I think you're going to impact the soccer field. So that's an issue. But also, let's talk about traffic. What is the worst intersection in this town for fatalities? East and High Plain. Where we're, now we're gonna take kids coming up from the west or the, the south, whatever you wanna call it, up east. I just wanna point that out. That intersection has had more problems over the years and you can talk to the police department. So that's an issue. Uh, the second issue is, and I think Jack Fisher alluded to it too, or he didn't allude to it, he actually said it is, East Street and Washington Street, he didn't say the main thoroughfares, but he's right, is everybody's heading towards Boston. So you're gonna have major traffic going that way, but East and Washington are also major thoroughfares for commuters at the same time we have school. You have Robbins Road, it's a back road. You know, so a parent has to take a little bit of time getting out to take a left coming out of Robbins Road onto Route 27L. So what? They can go down the end of Robbins and go right down to the down to 1A. To me, that's a back road. So let's talk about the traffic right there. The other issue hasn't been talked about too is, and it's not a big issue, but I'll bring it up anyway. We don't have any sidewalks on the north side of East Street. 
So if a kid's coming down or up, there's only one place to cross. And that now you're making it even more difficult. That are we going to have another crossing guard? Or are we going to put the kids walking all the way up into left field where the, the proposed road is going? All right. So we have those issues. From a builder, I, I'm going to tell you, when we price out jobs, if I'm building new, you're going to get a better price than not necessarily new, but when you got a tight site like this. And the problem with a tight site like this is you're dealing with kids. This isn't even high school. This is middle school. I'm glad it's not an elementary. But you're going to be building right next to them. Uh, the thing that hasn't been considered, if I was a parent, is I'd be concerned, let's, wait a second, my kids have been home doing these, these stupid computer online stuff. And now I'm going to put them through four years of this between noise and dust and all that, that's an issue that parents should think about. I'm just pointing that out. I don't have, like I said, kids that are gonna be affected, but that's a big issue. And the fact is, as a member in, on the planning board for the last umpteen years, I don't like that loop they have for the fire truck way up. So, so they gotta go way up and around. It didn't seem like a whole lot of public safety access to our building. And I, I heard earlier take, talking about taking cuts and fills and that. Hey, I know that site very well. I went to school there, so I know what you're up against. And trying to build something of this size next to an existing school and have that school still function properly is, is more than a challenge. So I would be considering that as a negative. Um, people seem to like bird. Now, some of the negativity about Johnson, you know, some of it kind of like, People just don't want it there for a reason. All right, cutting trees, and I think couples can back me up if they don't, I don't really care. Cutting trees is nothing. That's such a nothing. You're probably talking about 10,000 bucks an acre. These guys can knock out two acres in a day. So tree cutting is nothing. Regards to the trails, I would hate to think that one school is moved because of a trail. Now, if you look at the Bay Circuit Trail, it goes pretty much along the ridge line, but if you read the whole Bay Circuit Trail, if anybody's familiar with it, it actually as it exits on the Robbins Road, it goes down Robbins, goes down Elm Street, follows Elm, goes across the little bridge that was built years ago by the uh, town hall, up into the pool, and then down Stone Street and off. So really, the trail itself is not something that, it, it, it hasn't been interrupted, but you can still go around it, but to stop something for that. The other thing and I, that a lot of you weren't necessarily on the meeting is the stuff about water. This is an area one. This building's allowed in area one. No ifs, ands, or buts. And as I pointed out, we've had many site plans in front of my board that have built in area one without a mention from the sewer water as an issue. You go down to South Street, that's area one. The uh, TR Miller, nice building, nothing there. CrossFit across the street, no issues. And a matter of fact, the, the latest one, which was only a few years ago, the Dunkin' Donuts up on Common Street, right by Jarvis Farm. Not an issue, but as, as Jack and I think uh, Dave Salvatore alluded to, as I pointed out, we built, we've, we've tripled the size of our DPW, which is in Area 1, and we've built a maintenance garage that is probably within feet of the 400 foot and I want to point out to everybody is the 400 feet is zone one that's a DEP requirement you can't build within it after that it's pretty much up to the local ordinance to, to uh, govern now one thing that hasn't been mentioned that should be the elevation difference between the pump station at Johnson and the elevation of the school is about 50 feet that's a lot of what a difference that makes a big difference in filtering back into it. So that should be considered. So all I'm pointing out is all the issues on both sides of the table. Um, to me, as a contractor, Johnson would be the one I'd want to do, only because of the simplicity of it. Um, Bird is a lot of challenges and all that. So I just want to knock raise a few questions and a few issues to everybody so that they understand that one isn't necessarily 100% better. Um, if you don't like Johnson for the water, fine. But as far as everything else, it seems to be the one that you'd have the less issues with. And um, 
I just want to make sure everybody understands, and I can't emphasize enough, and someone may bring it up at some later date, is the intersection of Washington, I mean, I'm sorry, East Street and High Plain. That, at some point in the future, and I emphasize in the future, as part of the Pulte agreement down there, Pennington Place, or whatever it is, at the old woodworkers, they, uh, that's the last thing they have to do before they leave, and that's change the intersection, which will be a great improvement. But the deal with that is they do not have to do that until the last building is done. Out of, they have two up, and they get two more, and they haven't started either one. So I just want to point out to everybody that that's going to come maybe someday. Then that's a maybe, but I just want to indicate that that's not coming next week or in two, in two weeks or whatever, even a year. So that's down in the future. And the problem with it, it's tied into the number of buildings. So Pulte can only sell three major buildings there and they only get to the fourth. We don't get that new intersection there. So with that all being said, I just want to point out everything that's here. And I also want to point out is the fields is I think that's very important for everybody to understand. There's not a requirement of it. I've built enough schools right now that you're lucky, some urban sites, you're lucky if you get 25 square feet of uh, planting area. So, and that's, I'll wind it up with that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Goff, and then Ms. Lawson, and Ms. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher, and then Ms. Santiago Taylor. Thanks, Mark. Um, thanks, this has been helpful. It's good to, uh, like I said, I always listen to the pros and the cons of, of everybody, so I appreciate that. Um, just for my opinion and listening all this and also listening to um, the the feedback that we've received um, you know I keep going back to you know Boris's comment and then Sue Lawson's comment at the beginning of um, you know the community support and being able to get this this project through um, I do know we talked about the, the multiple community forums but also taking a look at the um, comments that have come through through the middle school building project and I know that Tony and Brian um, can speak more to that um, as needed and in terms of that community support in terms of BR to the reno I do agree um, with those that mentioned you know the phases and the disruption and those that have been through that uh, process or their kids or, or remember those times um, and um, so that's why I'm, I'm not in favor of that disruption uh, with the modulars and the potential ineligible cost. Um, I, I do lean towards the, um, the, and that's the reason why I lean towards more of that B1 um, of the bird site uh, new building. Uh, thank you, Dr. Goff. Uh, Ms. Lawson, I believe you were next. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to react to uh, a number of the comments that, that were made. One is that we're, uh, Katya, I think, said we need to focus on what's best for the children. I think that's why we're all devoted to this project is, of course, we are trying to figure out what's best for the children. But what is best for the children is a new middle school. So if we go forward with a proposal that does not pass, um, these kids are not going to get a new middle school. So I'm kind of laser focused on what's a good project project and what is something that will be um, welcomed and supported by the public. Um, I don't think Johnson will be. The fact that the a new Johnson Middle School would be better than the old Johnson Middle School as far as affecting the water supply is not persuasive in my mind because um, there is an alternate site which would immediately would just eliminate the issue of um, affecting our water supply in any way. And affecting the water supply spooks a lot of people. It just does. Um, the other thing about tree cutting, um, it might not be expensive to cut trees, but who wants to cut trees? I don't. And a lot of people, I think, in town will not be happy about cutting a lot of trees. It's an environmental issue. Um, the fact that Jack says that it is allowed a new um, Johnson uh, school on the Johnson site would be allowed doesn't mean that it would be palatable and again we have to get this through town meeting we have to get it through um, uh, you know an override to the public so I don't think that that is going to um, be a winning argument um, the other thing I would like to say is that 
the Sewer and the Water Commission is commissioners are who people will listen to on the subject of water. Every one of us could have our own individual opinion on whether the water supply um, or the wells would be jeopardized by a new school at Johnson. But at the end of the day, people are not going to listen to me on that. They're going to listen to the sewer and water commissioners, and they spoke very clearly. Finally, um, I think traffic concerns east and high plain. I know that there have been discussions about T-boning that intersection to make it less uh, uh, of a problem than it is now. And I think that can be addressed. I think the idea of having traffic um, being able to access the site from two major uh, roads is a plus. Bottom line, uh, I'm a pragmatist. Um, I like the, the fact that um, B1 does not cost as much as some of the other um, options. Um, I also am opposed to renovation. I think we need a new school. I think the right side is bird, and I think it will be um, much more readily uh, accepted by the public and endorsed. I think if we go for Johnson, because you know some of us think that that's ideal and would be easier to build on, um, I think at the end of the day, and I have to say, you know, Jack talks about having a lot of experience in building. Um, you also have a lot of experience, as I do, with town meeting. And here's an argument that I've heard a hundred times. I definitely want a new fill-in-the-blank senior center, police station, fire station, but not at that site, if it was at a different site. So what you're going to have are people saying, oh, I'm not opposed to a new middle school, just not at Johnson because of the water issues. So I don't think that we're going to get a middle school if we go forward with the Johnson site. And we desperately need one. And so I am strongly in favor of B1, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher, I believe you're next. Um, you know, in all the discussion that happened around these new fields that we built up at Route 1A, I think we cut down about nine acres, 10 acres worth of trees. I don't recall in any, any, any forum that ever coming up as a major issue as to why. Um, just saying, um, I don't think we're looking at cutting even you know, close to that volume or that acreage of uh, trees up at the Johnson site. Um, you know, one one more comment. You know, I I work with Jack permanent building committee as well. I always appreciate his feedback. I learned a lot from the past, and I do take a great deal of weight in you know his assessment of the, the Johnson site, just as a as a as a better site from a construction standpoint, logistically. Um, you know, one other comment I want to make as well is if you guys are interested, um, the DPW garage um, that he, he brought up, he brought it up in the forum we had last Tuesday night on the joint meeting. Um, that, that discussion was had back on September 11, 2017 um, on the sewer and water um, site on the uh, town of Walpole. The meeting minutes are posted there. Um, just to kind of understand from my perspective uh, where I stand on this, we we approved or sewer and water approved that DPW garage, which was 70 feet from zone one. I think we're looking at over 300 feet from zone one. And we're talking about, I mean, I don't know if anybody's been down there. I was there at the unveiling of it, um, but that DPW, garage is a is a pretty major facility that also stores toxic uh, chemicals as well. Um, 70 feet from zone one, that was approved 400 by sewer and water, September 11, 2017. Thank you. Mark? I'm sorry, Mr. Fisher, you cut out on me. I believe Ms. Santiago Taylor had a hand up earlier and then Ms. Gallivan. Yeah, so I just wanted to add a couple of things. Um, I do think that we need fields and we don't need fields because of outside sports or whatever. We need fields because it's education and physical education is part of <laughs> regular education. So like fields are really, really important. And I do agree that the amount of trees that are going to be coming down for Johnson is not environmentally friendly. 
Um, so the, the last thing I want to say, um, you know, it says a lot of a community when we vote for what's going to pass as opposed to what's going to be best. Um, if we go into, if it worked for me 50 years ago, I don't know how old you are, Jack, um, it should work for my kids. We can't. Like, you know, life changes. Um, so we need to do better for our kids. Um, I, I get that the fear that Johnson is that it's not going to pass because of the neighborhood, because of the trees, because of the water. Um, but we still need to have an idea of what is going to, what is the best environment? And then we can try to figure out how to convince people. Um, and Alice, I respect your opinion. Um, I just, I guess I have a different background. I have a different life and I don't vote for what's going to work. I vote for what's going to be best for everyone, um, whether it's uh, not a popular vote. Um, I will vote for, for, the, for the school no matter where it is because I think that we need a new one. Um, but I still think that for the community, the Johnson is going to be the better side for the kids. Thank you, Ms. Santiago Taylor. Ms. Gallivan, I believe you had a hand. Um, yes, I, I don't know how many people can access their email while they're on Zoom. I was trying to do this and I did just forward the, um, the message that Bill Abbott sent to the middle school project email today because it counters a number of the points that are being made about the water. So it, it's there. It explains some of the position from the water and sewers perspective that we don't have anybody to do tonight. So that's, that's there. That's one point if people want to read it. Um, another one is people are talking about the students being able to be in a building while construction is going on. Yes, that is something that, that takes extra work, but I'm working in a building right now that just opened and I worked for the beginning part of the year in the old building while construction was going on. The, uh, and it happens to be one that Compass is managing. and. You know, it, I'm sure it took a bazillion meetings to get it running efficiently, but they, the disruption to students was minimal. Um, you know, it's not, there wasn't dust everywhere. There were um, safety protocols were, were well thought out. So um, it's different from when we did an addition renovation at Walpole High School where we were renovating a building that students were actually in. They were able to separate it as two, two sites and both were safe, both uh, functioned well and, um, and Compass managed it. And then the last thing I would say is, uh, you know, you talk about perspective, Katya, and I recognize what you're what you're saying. I think I just hope you listen to the fact that some of us have worked really hard on projects that have failed because the the percentage of people that have children that will be affected by this project is pretty small. The percentage of people that have children in school right now in grades K through 12 is probably about 21% of the population. So um, we do have to think about what is sellable to the general public. Uh, it would be a shame to bring forward something that we don't think we have enough support for. So those were my three points. Ms. Gallivan. Does anybody else have yeah. a question or comment? I do. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Cox. Okay, uh, just a few things to point out. I'm not going to take any sides one way or another, but I keep hearing that the neighbors up in Johnson are going to take umbrage to this. Uh, you have neighbors up at Bird too, so you can't discount that. Uh, uh, we, I think we did find out we don't need, there's no requirement for fields. So, you know, and you think about it, right, is your field's only usable to go outside for gym until what, middle of October, then you're in the little gym for the rest of the time. So 
that's kind of a side issue. But what I think needs to be answered, at least from my perspective, uh, and this goes back to either Compass or the architects, both these buildings are, you'll never build them like that again. They're reinforced concrete with pan slab construction. You can put a bomb in there and it will not do anything to it. So I just want that to be understood by everybody is the building itself, there's nothing structurally wrong with it and you're not gonna get anything better. And I, that needs, someone's gonna ask that question and, and they're gonna have to be prepared to answer why aren't we going in and doing this and this and this inside? It's like blowing your kitchen apart or whatever, but you don't take your roof and your walls down. And I hope Compass and Tape are uh, ready to answer that question, which is going to be asked because, you know, the, the term for these both these buildings is they're built like a brick. And I, you know, I'd say it, but I can't say it on TV here or whatever, but that's what they're built like. And that, that has to be at least thought about. And I just want to be forewarned is why can't we do anything like that? And that is, you know, you, because we do, did have the option of renovating and someone's going to ask that. So that needs to be addressed. I'm not commenting on all three options. I just want to make sure that they are ready to address that at some point. Uh, thank you. A uh, couple more speakers, Mr. Salvatore, then Mr. Jack Fisher, and Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. Okay, so I just uh, quickly circle back. I, I, again, I had voted for the job, the Bert, the Bird site originally, I know the overwhelming majority voted for the Johnson site. I just don't want people to um, be making a change in their vote based on the water board's uh, presentation because this is the same group that said yes to the, to the garages. And I want you also to know that what, how the water, uh, the sewer and water got involved in this was at the request of the members of the um, Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen had a meeting and they were discussing this project and they were very concerned that every project they've proposed on Robbins Road had gotten shot down in the past. The senior center and the police station and maybe the police station twice had been shot down at that location. And so they, their, their inquiry about this project their concern about choosing Johnson was not for the best interest of the students, was not because it's a better site, not because if it's a cheaper site, which it's not, uh, which it is. It's because they were concerned about its ability to pass. And so they contacted the sewer and water and said, can you bring out all your stuff and show how close this is to the, to the, um, the well site? And they created the problem. They created the issue of, you know, this being close to sewer and water, to the to the wellhead. It's it's 400 feet from the wellhead is the where you cannot build, and then this is another 300 feet beyond that, and as Mr. Conroy indicated, is much higher. So I don't want I, I for those of you that feel uh, that this is the right location, it, you should not be concerned with the water supply issue at all. That, you know, again, they, they built, uh, you know, they're doing diesel repair and changing oil within a much closer uh, location at, on town property. So I, as much as middle school, you know, I don't know that middle school boys can make that much pollution. So, um, <laughs> so th don't be concerned about that. Um, again, I will be voting for bird site for, the same reasons I voted for it before, but other people, um, if you think that's the better site, stick with that vote. And I just want you to know that I had nothing to do with the, you know, the second guessing that's going on uh, by the by the select board of your previous uh, approval or preference for uh, Johnson Middle School. I mean, for the yeah Johnson Middle School site. Thank you, Mr. Salvatore, Mr. Jack Fisher. Thanks, Mark. Um, look, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of discussion about a lot of points, and I just want to re reiterate on a on two or three very quickly. 
As far as the water is concerned and, the, and protection of the wellheads and protection of the discharge fields, I understand completely where sewer and water is coming from. They have a job to do and they need to protect it. However, this is not, this is not going to jeopardize the wellheads and the discharge fields. In fact, it's going to improve it if you put the new school at Johnson, because when you take the old building down, which is part of the project and is part of our cost and part of our reimbursable costs, you're going to be farther away than we currently are. So it's actually an improvement. And so rather than criticizing us for wanting to cite it, we should be, pr we should be praised for wanting to put it there to ha ultimately improve the protection of the wellheads and the, and the discharge areas. If we build a, at Bird Middle School, you still have the, exactly the same problem over Johnson, unless the town literally spends hundreds of thousands of dollars to demol demolish that building and let the, let the fields go fallow. So from a sewer and water perspective, and, I did, and Nancy, I have not had a chance to read what Bill Abbott said. I respect Bill Abbott a great deal. He knows what he's talking about, but the simple fact remains is that if we put the Johnson the building on the Johnson site where it's currently planned for, we'll have, we'll have improved protection for the, uh, the well fields. That's it. There's, that, that's a fact. And you can't argue with that. That's a fact. Second thing is we keep hearing about costs and so forth like that. All right. As Jack, Jack Conroy has pointed out, when you're doing site, when you're doing construction in close proximity to occupied buildings, and they're that close as they're going to be at, at, at uh, Bird Middle School, there is always unanticipated costs and it's always going to go up. Here we're talking about a completely separate site. The costs are much more controllable, much more predictable, okay? And, um, and so I, I think that your, your costs are much more predictable. They're lower, they're estimated to be $6 million lower. $6 million is a lot of money. Six million dollars spread across spread across the, the number of uh, of uh, uh, dwellings that we have in Walpole over the period of time with the interest charges and so forth like that. Six million dollars is a lot of money. That's what we paid for a police station. Almost what, exactly what we paid for a police station. So please, if we can save that kind of money, it's part of our charge as a committee. Look for the best value for the for this project. Third, in terms of the community support. I understand completely the issues. I understand the concern. I have the same concern that everybody has here. However, what I will offer is that through the entire discussions that we had with the police station, the fire station, and the senior center, yes, people uh, express concerns throughout the whole thing. Why don't you locate it here? Why don't you locate it here? Why don't we do it up at Robbins Road? Well, the problem with Robbins Road is no one wanted to put a police or fire station right next to store to the, the Johnson Middle School. It wasn't that it was a bad site. They just didn't want to put it right next to the Johnson Middle School. And so we had an opportunity to build it down on the, um, on the South Street site, which was a hazardous waste site, and it turned out fine. Okay. There were a lot of concerns about, about the, the location, a lot of alternatives. They were actually voting on town hall floor and someone was raising the hand uh, to, uh, to move the site. So I, I understand and I accept the fact that there's gonna be all sorts of questions about where it is, but when it comes time to make the decision, town meeting and for the override to fund this, it's not gonna be made by the primary concern is not going to be the location. The primary concern is the affordability and what it's going to offer. And if we have a building that is going to support the needs of the students in a cost-effective way, that's going to pass. It's not, it's not going to fail because of the location. It's going to pass because it's a cost-effective solution and it's going to meet the needs of the town and, meets, and, and most importantly of all, meet the needs of the students. So, Mark, what I'd like to suggest after we go through the, the final set of hands here is what I started with way at the beginning. I think we need to take a look at this table. I think we need to take a look and see how we might want to make adjustments to the adjust to the recommendations that Compass had, because I'm not particularly comfortable voting on this based upon the way this is right now. Thanks. Mr. Uh, Mr. Fisher. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. Hey, thanks, Mark. Um, you know, I, I'm on this committee as a representative member of the building committee, but just something else. I know a lot of people have 
mentioned that Jack mentioned he doesn't have kids that will be affected by this project. I think Mrs. Santiago Taylor said her kids will be out of it. Um, just one thing to note, I, I'm also, you know, I, I'm a parent that will have children impacted by this project. Um, and, and just wanted to note that I have a, I've got a couple of older, but I've also got a, a, a fifth grader right now and a second grader who, you know, should, I'm, I'm hoping if, if, if things go according to schedule, um, should, should be able to benefit from this project. Maybe seventh, eighth grade, something like that. But um, just want to know. Um, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Um, I was going to say, my kids are going to get the noise, but won't get the benefit of it. So I'm still in favor of the project. My kids will get the disruption, but not the benefit of it. Mark? Would would any would anybody? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, Jack. I'm I'm not going to go on forever. Just I just want to point out. There's a lot of people on this committee that haven't don't have the history. I just want to point out something. When we built the Elm Street School, that was originally going to go where the, this new middle school was planned up on the hill. That was the all intent and purposes. Nobody had any issues with it. The reason it didn't go there is because. My wife, who was a town meeting member and a selectman, found out that they were selling or Christian Life Center was going out of business, so to speak, and we picked that place up for 600 grand. It was a hell of a deal we got. But what I'm going back to say to everybody, so they understand, because you're gonna get confronted by people been around on this, is back when we contemplated before the Christian Life Center was even a uh, thought, that it was going up on that little hill and no one had an issue with it. No, something from nothing from water and sewer, trails, coming trees. So that does have a little history to it. So I just wanted to bring that out. So that if, if you vote for bird and someone comes up to you who's been around the town for a long time, it's, it's, that's just something to, to consider. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to suggest a non binding poll of the committee to see where we stand, which might give us a gauge as to how much more we need to talk. Does, does anybody, I think, do we need a motion to have a non-binding poll? I'm not quite certain how Robert's rules work. Can I just have a, uh, make a comment? I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to, I'm, I was supposed to be in the select board meeting and I was listening to it. That was the noise in the background. Um, so is it just going to be a non-binding vote tonight? You're not going to take a final vote if that's the case? Take, no, we have to take a final vote as well, but I'm, I just want to just, okay. just trying to get a feel for the committee at this point. Okay. All right. Mark, I got a quick suggestion. Yes. Let's knock one out of the park and let's just do a real vote on the reno. I don't think you're going to get anybody pushing that one. All right, all right, very good. We have a, a motion to discount hold, the action. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Mark, Mark, Jeff Fisher. Yes. I mean, yes, I think sure. Brian and Tony pointed out that that proposal has to be put forward as part of the MSB requirements, period. I don't see what a vote has to do. That's a good, good point. Gonna uh, buy any, any comment on that? Um, well, you can put it forward, but you can have a vote of the committee that says we're not in favor of it, that's all. What we're looking for, um, from everybody is that we we need to yes br2 will be submitted to the state as one of the three options that we have listed for the psr but tonight what the committee is doing is resolving on their preferred option which means you have to pick one at the end of the day that you're going to have us continue to design so that's that's the goal and so yes br2 will still be in the binder but it will you can take a vote that says we can dismiss BR2 as um, a finalist for further consideration. I don't know what the language would be, but that's what you could do. Okay, very good. So I'm, I'm, I don't mean to push this, just making the suggestion. Would we want to take a poll then uh, where people could choose either of the three just to give us a feel for the committee? That works for me. Okay, very good. So I will... Mark, you want to do... Do you want yes. to do, are we going to do rank choice? Um, <laughs> kidding. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That that takes some math. So I'm going to go through the I'm going to go through the committee, and uh, if 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 somebody else could keep track, so we can double check each other's math. All right. Uh, Ms. Gallivan. I would choose B one. Uh, Ms. Lawson. 
one. Miss Santiago Taylor. Um, J. Oh my God, I can't see. J two. J two. Very good. Doctor Goff. B one. Uh, Mr. Jack Fisher. Mr. Jack Fisher. You, Jack. He's trying to unmute. Sorry, J2. Very good. Uh, Mr. Connor. I would pick B1. Mr. Fisher. B1. Mr. Hahn. B1. Ms. Gayositz. B1. Mr. Anderson. B1. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. Personally, I'd like more time to consider it. Okay, so we'll take that as, a, as an abstention, I, I guess. Thank you. Um, Mr. Salvatore. I'll stay consistent and say B1. Mr. Senek. B1. And Mr. Conroy. J1. J2, you mean? Okay, <laughs> whatever. I, why do we have a J2? I don't know. What was J1? I missed that. I'm, I'm, I'm not certain, to be honest. At I this think point. that was the ad rental on J2. Yes. Oh, okay. No, there, there was, was, a, there was a, a, sorry, there was a rental. Options. Sorry, there were two separate new options on J, on Johnson, just different building forms and studying different ways to arrange school. Um, so it, you could say J1 or J2, but we just took one of them off. So I'll go with J. Okay, very good. Thank you. And I'm going to add my vote for, for B1. So uh, does anybody have a tally to double check oh, our math? 11-3-1. 11-3-1. Yep, that's what I have too. Anybody disagree? Uh, so do we have need for further discussion? I get a couple of questions and yes, I, as, as I stated, I, I'd like some more time. I have not, I had a conflict as well last Wednesday night as far as a public forum. I haven't had a chance to, you know, um, sit in on the hour and 10 minutes of the uh, Walpole Media YouTube presentation. Um, I'd like that opportunity. I'd like Brian or, or Tony to weigh in on what the impact would be to schedule if we did not take a vote tonight. Uh, we're, the impact of schedule is we're trying to get the final package together, which includes an updated cost estimate and some additional design work for the selected option done. Um, so that can be back, brought back to this committee. Um, Ideally, you get all the information by the 19th of February and brought back to this committee for a vote approval to send to the MSBA by the 23rd, so a complete 100% package. Um, long story short is we're, we're kind of three weeks out from that, four weeks out from that. Um, so we're kind of at the point now where we need to make a decision uh, so we can hit that deadline. And the, the reason is there's been a lot of concerns here. brought up over the last week, and it's only been a week, literally. Um, I don't think the committee's had proper time to vet them. I haven't myself. Um, I haven't been able to, you know, afford the time. I know Glenn Maffey and Bill Abbott have offered um, for a site visit at the Johnson. I'd like to take them up on that. I haven't been able to do that in, you know, only a week's time. I I implore the committee to also possibly uh, do that as well. Um, that's my stance. Thanks. Mr. Ms. Lawson. Um, I'm going to rely on my NLRB uh, election experience and say, with all due respect to Jeff, regardless of which way he goes, it would either be 12-3 or 11-4. So I think we have a clear majority for, um, for a, a preferred option. I don't see why delaying it would help us because it's not going to change the, the uh, result of the vote. Uh, Ms. Lawson, do I, do I sense a motion there that you didn't quite phrase? I'm not, I don't want to speak for you. I will. I, I move to uh, uh, declare that B1 is the option of, uh, as far as the majority of this committee goes, 
and that we move forward with B1 as our preferred option. So we have a, a motion. Do we have a second. second? We have a motion from Ms. Lawson, a second from Ms. Gallivan. So I will poll the committee. Um, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Mr. Fisher. Uh, this is to Brian. Brian, what's the impact if we don't present on uh, March 23rd to the uh, to the state and we wait a month? Uh, we miss, I think we're teed up right now with this schedule is to make the MSBA board meetings required to um, approve and also the facilities assessments meetings. And they only they only happen um, every other month. So we end up laying the project by two to three months in addition to whatever we delay it ourselves. Yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but that's actually the reality of the way that the MSBA meets. So they do have a meeting of the board and then a meeting of the facility assessments committee, but they do not have consecutive meetings through March, April, and May. Yeah. So what ends up happening, and this is something that we talked about early on, we actually bumped the schedule up for PSR to this deadline so that we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be caught in that like two month black hole. Um, and that's just the nature of how their annual cycle works. So they take those few months off every other month um, during this um, second quarter of the year because they're allocating for new projects. So what they do is they take a month off here and there, which is not the case the rest of the year. Um, so the way this timed out is we bumped this up earlier so that we wouldn't yeah. get caught in a, in a period where we were waiting for them to sort of review. So yeah, so it would it would at least impact by three months if we don't get the PSR in by the end of February. Okay, let me ask a slightly different question or phrase it a little bit differently. What you're saying is it would, if we did not make the March 23rd date, that would put us off for three months till the next board, to the next state board meeting when they would, uh, when they would make the decision uh, on our project. Would that would the net impact of that just be to delay the start of the project by three months, or would it put some funding risk in it? Would it delay us going before town meeting in, in October? What is the impact on the project? That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, Jack. So big picture schedule, um, Tony. I don't know if you want to go back to that first slide, but that two to three months. Uh, right now, moving forward with the preferred solution so if we select it tonight it goes into the msba process at the end of february we hit their april facilities meeting and we're moving forward in schematic design which is supposed to finish at the end of august and that's at the point where we get into the board meetings with the msba to actually lock in schedule and budget at the end of august beginning of september and that's leading up to your town meeting so you're only two two to three months ahead of town meeting at that point so we're pressing right up against not making a town meeting this fall um, if you delay it by two to three months. Brian, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm going to make a point of order. I, I believe we've had a motion in a second. And if, if I understand my Robert's rules correctly, we're supposed to go directly to a vote. No, with, with all due respect, Mark, this is discussion on something that is directly related to the motion in front of you. If you want, if you want, you can ask someone to call the question, but discussion is entirely appropriate. And it's I been just a motion in I'm, I'm, I'm just, if there's been a motion in a second, I'll take your word for it, Jack. Okay. Okay. So, uh, to, so just, I'll, I'll finish up quickly. Brian, yeah. so the net result of this, a, a three uh, by not making the uh, March 23rd date, it puts February. us at risk. It's it's February. February 26th. February, date. February 26th yeah. date. That puts us at risk of a delay in meeting with uh, and getting approvals from the state by three months, which puts us at risk of not going before town meeting or having all the costs in place that are necessary for the town meet meeting vote. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Santiago Taylor, if you could please. Sorry, I, you know, I think we're so far off. I don't think it's worth risking or delaying the process. Um, I, I, we need to move, like looking at the state house, the economic impact, we don't know what's going to happen in the next few months and we need the money. So even though I prefer Johnson, I, I don't think that we should 
delay this process. I think we need to move on this process. Thank you, Ms. Santiago Taylor. So we have a motion and a second, a motion by Ms. Lawson, a second by Ms. Caliban to approve the B1 project. I'm gonna poll the committee if I could. Ms. Can Caliban. I, so I can go to my other meeting. Yes, Mr. Salvatore. Yes. Very good. Uh, Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. Ms. Santiago Taylor. Sorry, what am I voting for? B B1. The motion is to approve B1. The to make B1 sign. the preferred option. No. Very good. <laughs> Dr. Goff. Yes. Mr. Jack Fisher. No. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Frischer. Yes. Ms. Gayositz. Ms. Gayositz. Yes. yes. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. No. Uh, Mr. Senek. Yes. Mr. Conroy. No. And I vote yes. It is a vote. Uh, let me go back and look at our agenda here. Do you want to get yours? Yeah, um, um, Mark, Bill Hahn lost you. Do you want to just hear his vote? Oh, certainly. Yep. Go ahead, Bill. I voted one. I'm sorry. I lost my connection. Can you hear him? I did not hear him. Hold on. All right, let me turn it up. Go ahead. Can you go ahead, Bill, again? Yeah, I, I voted B1. All right, I heard B1. So I guess we could take that as a vote for B1 unless anybody objects. No, he said yes. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Bill. Uh, so the, the next item our, on our agenda is to discuss upcoming meetings. Uh, Mr. Jarvis and Mr. Pena, I don't know if you have any... Uh, no, just a recap um, that we will have a meeting on the 23rd, um, which is the deadline we were just talking about, to vote to submit the PSR. Um, we're going to try and get materials out, obviously, ahead of time like we normally do, which will be a pretty um, lengthy packet. It will be similar to what we did for PDP. It's the whole, um, the whole packet and probably of interest to um, the committee in that packet will be um, further cost estimates on the preferred option. Those will get tightened up a little bit with um, with the design moving a little bit more forward. Um, so this is tonight. We do have a select board update uh, where they will endorse this preferred option of B1. And then um, again, like we talked about, the next meeting on the 23rd will be to vote the actual report um, showing B1 as the preferred option for submission to the MSBA. Thank you, Mr. Pena. Mark, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Conroy. Are the school committee and the selectmen's um, votes binding? Uh, no. Mr. Jarvis, could you speak to that? No. No, it's just the building committee. Okay. Uh, do we have any final questions or comments? And if not, Yes. Take a yes, Mark, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I, I'd just like to entertain, I don't know if this needs to be something on an agenda, but um, just logistically and schedule wise, is there any possibility to push the meeting out till 7 p.m. on all future meetings? We, uh, certainly, Mr. Fisher, we could take that under suggestion. I don't know, if, does anybody have any? Any uh, can anybody agree with that potentially? Uh, Seven o'clock was initially. I mean, six o'clock was initially selected because on Tuesday nights is select board meetings at seven. Um, so they were scheduled for six, so it didn't conflict. If it helps, we could do it on a Wednesday night, the twenty fourth, um, or any. Um, if that helps anybody to make it later or. The, the later in the evening logistically works substantially better for me. 
Yeah, I agree with Jeff. I mean, I'm humping coming home, especially tonight in the freaking little bit of snow. And you know, <clears throat> it, it gets tough just to get out of work and get there at 6. It's very tough. And what Tony said on Wednesday is fine. You don't have the interference with the selectmen. Yeah. I don't know of any other committees that meet this early. <laughs> Economic. They meet at 5. <laughs> But I don't think any of them work. <laughs> Kidding. Mark, but, I'll suggest Wednesday at seven. Okay, we I we have to do Wednesdays at seven. Um, oh, I I could do some. Ooh, I can do some Wednesday at seven, but I cannot do Wednesday the twenty fourth. So might I suggest that we we stick? And again, this is just a suggestion uh, that we stick with the meeting schedule as is the next meeting and then maybe try to reconcile a better time because it seems as if what works for one person isn't going to work for the other and to make a decision this quickly might not be well thought out um let me ask this is there a selection selectman's meeting on uh, february 23rd no i was going to ask the same question if it isn't, why don't we push it to seven? Because there's no conflict then. So there is no select board. Do you have that? I think Patrick is checking. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Um, the 23rd, is that what you said? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, there is a meeting that night. There is. Yeah, on the 9th and the 23rd. Where are you looking, Patrick? Because I'm on the select board calendar and there's nothing on it. <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar. Well, we have a dilemma here. Um, I would suggest sticking to the calendar as it is for the next meeting and then reconciling what we can from there. But if anybody has a better suggestion, Twenty fifth, too late. Is that a school committee night? Okay, school committee. Yeah, Mark. Mark, it's fine for next meeting. Okay, very good, Mr. Fisher. So, can we leave it at that? We'll leave the next meeting as is, and then, and then come up with something more amenable to all. Thank you. Very good. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, I'd be willing to take a motion. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Fisher. Make a motion to adjourn. Very good, Mr. Fisher. We have a motion from Mr. Fisher. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Santiago. <laughs> I vote yes. Ms. Gallivan? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Ms. Santiago Taylor? Yes. Mr. Jack Fisher? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Fisher? Yes. Dr. Goff? Yes. Ms. Giosits? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Jeffrey Fisher? Yes. Mr. Senek? Yes. And Mr. Connolly? Yes. All right, we are adjourned. <laughs>